Hey guys, it's Owen here, and I'm joined here with Will. Will, how you doing, man? I'm doing good. I'm doing Will, good. go ahead and tell everybody a little bit about yourself. Yeah, so uh, my name is Will Boatner. Uh, I've been a, an employee for uh, Peckler and Coke for about two and a half years, and okay. a recent graduate of SDI. Cool. What year did you graduate? I graduated this year, uh, 2025, back in March. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, and how did you hear about SDI? So first off, um, I went to HK. Uh, Looking to, I guess you would say, join the industry of firearms. I've always enjoyed firearms from a young kid. Okay. Um, you know, AR-15s, bolt-action rifles, pistols. I built my first AR-15 as my, as you would say, high school graduation gift. Yeah. Um, my dad helped me support, get some of the tools. Didn't even know I needed certain tools to build that firearm. And yeah. so I got with a uh, retired Marine who was uh, part of my hunting lease. Okay. And he helped me out build. And I was like, man, this is cool. I want to learn how to, you know, do this on the regular yeah, and you know, be able to diagnose issues because I had an issue and I, I'd, I would always have to go to him yeah. and he would kind of give me some pointers, but I wanted a more in-depth history and understanding of how to diagnose a firearm. Gotcha. Um, and and so, how did you find out about SCI then? So um, working at HK, uh, actually one of our gunsmiths is a graduate of SDI. Gotcha. And, uh, I was working in the production facility on the assembly line of the VP9s, the MRA uh, A1s at the time, and the uh, HK-45s. And so we were building those rifles because the HK-45, of course, is uh, assembled here in the States. Yeah. Uh, so we were putting all the parts in from Germany in the gun. Same thing with the uh, MR rifles. And so I wanted a better understanding and uh, one day to get into, as you would say, gunsmithing. Yeah. Being able to, as you would say, kind of have the better understanding of the firearm. Gotcha. Anytime there was an issue, we were going to be the ones to diagnose it because we built the gun. And yes, certain select firearms knew how to diagnose an issue because of I built it. Yeah. I know how the parts work. But my end goal, and I've always wanted to do this, and I've thought about it, is possibly one day design a firearm. Yeah, okay. And so the understanding and the history and the background of guns is what I wanted to get first. Gotcha. So talking with HK and our HR department about certain ways to go about learning the firearms industry and being able to work on a select firearm, they talked about gunsmithing and yeah. becoming a gunsmith. As a gunsmith, you can do a lot of things depending on what branch of this industry you wanted to do, yeah. whether it's hand checkering, finishing, stock finishing, or just simple diagnosing, or engineering. And so you gotta know how a gun works yeah. before you can design one. So let's backtrack a little bit. You said you worked for HK and then you wanted to pursue and you know increase your education in gunsmithing. What were you doing for HK beforehand? Uh, for HK, I was just in the assembly plant. That was all I was doing. Didn't have a degree in anything, um, pretty much. I, and, and education is a top priority with yeah. me and my family. And so gotcha. I wanted to do something that I genuinely enjoyed. I went to a local community college and was kind of doing some, um, I guess, what is it, uh, general studies classes. Yeah, like general education General classes. education yeah. classes. And so, uh, and then I found out about SDI. But before I came to HK, I knew I would have to stop that school yeah. because it was an in-person. I had to go to the class, and HK is a full-time job. Gotcha. But speaking to some of the people there, they recommended a uh, SDI. And so I looked into it, um, and shout out to Miss Pam. Uh, yeah. She, she helped me out a lot because um, back in the early when I was looking into it, Alabama wasn't on the, uh, the list yeah. yet. And so she kept in, she kept informing me of updates on it, meetings y'all were having, and then she finally called me one day and said, hey, Will, Alabama's on the list. Yeah. Because that's my state of residency. And I signed up that day. <laughs> it seems like being online was one of your biggest determining factors to actually enroll mm -hmm. at SDI. What are some of the other reasons you chose SDI? SDI because the flexibility. Yeah. Uh, learning about how the class schedules worked. Everything's due on a Sunday night. So if I was busy Monday through Thursday yeah. at work, you know, having to work overtime or stay late with something, come in early, it wasn't a stress because my weekends were free yeah. and I was able to get all my work done on a weekend. And I've done plenty of those, um, as you would say, just my work week was hectic. I was yeah. tired. I was mentally drained, exhausted. And the weekend is all I had. I'd sleep in on Saturday, do all, do all my schoolwork, my discussions, my assignments, and my quizzes, and just get it all done on a Saturday or Sunday. Gotcha. So the flexibility, because sometimes, like you said, you were so busy, you weren't able to do it mm -hmm. Monday through Friday, so you would just have to, you know, sometimes you have to cram at the end there. So yeah. that's the biggest reason. And the professors were yeah. very great to work with, because some of our discussions were due on Wednesday nights. Yeah. And I would that's explain right. to them, you know, hey, I am a full-time employee with Heckler & Coke. We're always running. We're always doing this. If I turn in a, a discussion in late, I understand if you dock me points, 
but just realize I, I may not have the time, uh, yeah. depending on what I'm doing, if I do travel or just working so much overtime, I'm, I'm draining. Yeah. And they were very understanding of that, helping with the flexibility, let me turn into one or two assignments, uh, maybe like one or two days late, yeah. and you know, not docking those points. And so the professors, shout out to them because they were very helpful and grateful. Yeah. So, so that's a good point because I wanted you to talk a little bit about how SDI helped you while you were working and also enrolled as a student. Yeah, and so you know, with any kind of issue I had, you know, uh, Miss Pam or yeah. student services and my counselor was very easy to get in contact with. One email and I'd get a response pretty much either that day or next day. Yeah. If it was urgent, I'd you know do an urgent message, uh, but pretty much very communica uh, communication was very thorough. Yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, and so let, let's fast forward. You've graduated. What are you doing now? So right now I work uh, for Heckler & Coke. Uh, I am yep. in the customer service department. So any kind of issues, repairs, questions, just general everything. We travel. We, we come to the shows. Yeah. We answer questions. Um, sometimes even the uh, defense department of HK, of course, our military side, yeah. uh, will pull one of us to come help with the government side. Um, because as, as a customer service agent of HK, yep. we have to be a subject matter expert. Yep. And so with my background in gunsmithing, helping somebody kind of diagnose an issue over the phone yeah. ha is something that um, me personally, I, it, it, it's easy. They're having this issue. I know the firearm. I can kind of run through and diagnose the issue. If we do need to send it in for repair, the repair guys are like, I'm, you know, I'm very thorough with my notes. Hey, the customer's having this issue. You could possibly check this. And sometimes I may get a little thorough saying you can check this or check that. And they're like, hey, we are we are gunsmiths as yeah. well. We, we, we know how to check a firearm. But it's just the terminology that I've learned and how yeah. to diagnose something. It, well, what's the craziest thing you've seen? The craziest thing I've seen from a customer. That you're allowed to tell us. <sighs> craziest thing I've seen from a customer. Let me think here. Because you've got to see some of the, like, especially when customers are trying to explain what's wrong with their yeah, firearm. Yeah, um, so pretty much I had a, a customer call, um, snap caps, where he was using snap caps. Yeah. And uh, he pulled the trigger, and he didn't understand why his uh, trigger wouldn't reset. And I just, I stated, you know, hey, uh, snap caps aren't live ammunition. No way. Um, so uh, reciprocate your slide. Uh, and and your trigger's gonna reset. And he was like, oh, well, the guys at the gun store were talking to me how this is great for practice and everything. I was like, yeah, they are great. Um, but of course, this was a VP9, it's a striker yeah. fire design. And you can dry fire that gun all day long, it's not gonna hurt nothing. Yeah. Most of your hammer fire design guns, like older style, yes, you wanna kind of not do a dry fire with that hammer slamming forward. Yeah. But most of your modern design guns, like even ours, you can dry, I mean, you have to be, dry firing at thousands of rounds every day just to kind of notice a, a wear or impact that something's going wrong. That, that that leads me to my next question really because how did SDI prepare you for your day-to-day -day job now? So the history and the reading, uh, definitely the troubleshooting and diagnostic class, yeah, definitely. that was one that I took like very seriously with in-depth reading Yeah. because that was where I was going to learn how to diagnose something over the phone or over an email gotcha. because we are an online class we're reading all of this and with that being said i have to learn how to interpret what a customer is saying over the phone or over the email by reading and hearing and listening yeah because it's not physically in front of you exactly and so sometimes it's we can't give armorers level advice yeah um because yes i'm a gunsmith um but if anything that needs to be taken apart we bring it into hk gotcha mm -hmm. and people in with our turnaround times, uh, you know, depending on what, what the issue is, we'll even give you a shipping label. Yeah. You know, we you can send it straight to us, and we'll send it back to your doorstep. You're the owner of the firearm. Yeah. So, so what's the escalation process like? A customer calls into HK and they're like, hey, my firearm's not working, and then so what does we do it go we, straight so to you? Firearm's not working, uh, so we'll, we'll take the phone call. Any any and all phone calls through our customer service line are gonna come yeah. to either me or my three other colleagues. Gotcha. Um, so, for instance, customer calls in, uh, having failure to eject and distract. Um, Okay, so a lot of our firearms are, direct, are uh, pretty much designed and tested around the NATO 124 grain nine millimeter yeah. full metal jacket. Um, we do do a lot of further testing with different cartridge loads and everything, but pretty much, hey, I'm having failure to extract or failure to eject. Yeah. Okay, so the first thing we like to ask is, what kind of ammo are you using? Okay, uh, okay well I'm using um, 
I'm using federal 115 grain. Yeah. Okay, so what we would do is then we would then explain, okay, hey, so with our firearms, we designed them mostly around the NATO 124 yeah. grain projectile. Gotcha. And so with that being said, the 115 is not necessarily a NATO standard. And it's, it's a little bit of a lighter cartridge. You don't have a lot of energy reciprocating that slide to the rear. Yeah. So with the 124, it's like, hey, what we recommend, so you, just so you're not without your firearm for two to three weeks, go get, go get a box of 124, go shoot it, give us a call back. If you're still having issues, let us know. And a lot of people have called us back, hey, man, this worked. I'm going to start shooting 124. And so we'll say, our, our guns don't need a break-in period. Yeah. But every now and then you'll get something on a little bit of a tighter tolerance. Yep. Shoot you a couple hundred rounds of 124 grain, go right on back to the 115s, and you'll be fine. So that's the most common call you get? Pretty much. Gotcha. Now, afterwards, you know, with HK, are you planning on, do you have goals? Do you want to be? So working in customer service, yeah, working in customer service, uh, it's opened my, my eyes a little bit to the, the full industry. Yeah. What you can do with marketing, sales, and uh, even behind the scenes with engineering, because going back to my production days, uh, with the launch of our new CC9, I was able to see and watch yeah. the development of the CC9 and be able to go in and shoot some of the prototypes. Um, and so that was that was really cool to, to learn and see about, talk to the engineers about why it's having this issue, what we're doing to kind of fix that. And um, ultimately we, we released the, the greatest, and I'm gonna go ahead and say, not just because I work with HK, I've shot all these micros out there on the market. The CC9 is probably the most shootable micro nine I've ever shot. Yeah. I love that gun. So you would say that um, being on the other side of the curtain, mm -hmm. seeing what the industry's like, your your aspirations are to stay with HK. Then. Yes. You just want to mm -hmm. further your education. I'll further more. my education and possibly grow within the company, uh, whether it's through marketing and sales okay. or possibly pursue an engineering degree to hopefully one day design my own firearm. Gotcha. And just telling everybody, would you mm -hmm. say SDI is worth it? Yes. SDI is 100% worth and why, it. And why do you it's, say that? It, the flexibility and just the overall, everything's done at your house. Yeah. If you need to go run and grab something from Home Depot and, you know, talking about it with my professor, like, hey, this certain item is needed for this, he sends me a link to a Home Depot booth that. Yeah. And just the overall experience. And SDI has opened a lot of doors now that I have a gunsmithing degree. The Associates of Firearms Technology, that... And you know, in my family and at HK, it's not taken lightly. Yeah. You, I am a certified gunsmith through Sonoran Desert. Now I do have um, to grow on select firearms. Yeah. Uh, but SDI gave me that general understanding of how to be a gunsmith and how to do it properly. Awesome. Well, Will, thank you for your time. Yes, sir. Greatly appreciate it.